Hello guys, welcome back. My name is Angel. Welcome to this new episode of The Plus Plus. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about system design. Uh, I'm going to show you a strategy that I use with Git branches for environment deployments uh, on web applications. So let's jump right into that. So let me show you the graphic here. So let's jump directly into uh, how this looks like. So here you can see uh, how uh, I use at least six environments in order to make production deployments or build like a full pipeline. Uh, this is considering we have a large team. We have a production uh, version of the system with active users. So uh, think about this like how it should eventually be if you're starting building a new web product or a new web application. Um, again, this doesn't necessarily apply if you're like building a prototype or an MVP, or maybe you're in the early stages of your process. Just keep in mind that for uh, simplicity. So this is a very, 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 very robust uh, structure uh, in order to, you know, keep, uh, you know, uh, downtime to a minimum. Uh, keep uh, you know versions of the system everywhere in order to uh, properly test and keep you know everything really really tight and you know reduce all bugs and and you know those though those type of complicated situations right so let's start explaining this from the chart and then I'm gonna show you um, a little bit about each one of the environments and certain rules that I like to keep right so from left to right we start with feature branches right uh, feature branches is maybe the most popular approach uh, to develop features with Git. This basically is, you know, you branch out from an stable branch to create your feature or change your code. And then through pull requests or merge requests, depending on the system that you're using, uh, you integrate code to certain environments, right? We go a little bit more than that, or I go a little bit more than that into where the branches should be created and how this should be integrated and move forward to the production environment. So in the far left, we have feature branches. Uh, in the far right, we have the production environment. So things move normally from left to right in a, in a normal process, in a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, but each one of the environment has certain conditions. Let's go through that, right? Uh, also, I have a couple of symbols here, a couple of T's, if you can see here, with the light blue, dark blue, yellow. Uh, and kind of like uh, middle blue, maybe we have a, a very dark blue, a normal blue, and a light blue for representing different type of testings, right? Uh, here in the light blue, uh, you can see that we have unit testing, which is also the most common way of testing the system. They should be automated. You can also implement end-to-end -end testing or smoke testing or regression testings on this environment. So every time that you change uh you know feature you have to make sure that it's properly tested with with this strategy right uh next to it we have integration environments next to that we have the development environment usually will where, where developers uh, put their features available then the qa environment where qa staff test their features we have then a pre-production environment or staging area uh you know may, many people call them staging and finally we have the production environment if you can see uh, between each one of the environments, there is a gatekeeping process that we're gonna check out later. Um, and uh, we have uh, you know additional information here, like a dev database for the QA's development integration so they can play it around. For the staging area, right, we have the production database, uh, which is the same one that uses the production environment. Um, here in the blue box, uh, different blue box, uh, different from testing, we have usually the type of users that will be uh you know using the system or using these environments right we in the integration environment we have dev users development environment we have alpha users uh the qa environment we have qa right pre-production environments you usually want to add like beta users right for uh you know uh testing early uh features or you know early versions of the system and then in the production environment you have your regular users um here at the bottom, this is kind of like super, uh, you know, very um, specific for the process, how I like to manage it, right? Um, in the case that we have changes on our database and in our structure that may uh, require mutation of the data, changes of the data, or new features that require changes of the data, we have this fork on the, on the pipeline, which includes a data migration process, right? 
in a data migration process, maybe scripts or, or way that you want to or plan to mutate the data or the database. Uh, we have different environments uh, like the data migration environment where you perform those migrations in a clone or a copy of or a subset of the production database so you can test that everything is working as expected, right? Uh, this approach, this fork that we have here, uh, it's also it also can be automated. It doesn't necessarily have to be a fork. This could also be pre-staging or staging areas uh, where you you simply perform the migration, you test it, and if everything is okay, you uh, you know uh, push the red button to either deploy the core environment or run all the same processes in the production environment. Right. That's why we have here the environment mutation where we just apply the data migration process to the pre-production environment or the staging environment, or we have the arrow here that indicates the environment swapping, which is basically we create a new environment, we upgrade the environment, and then we swipe it uh, with the current production environment. Uh, all these things can be automated. There exists a lot of tools there. My preferred tool, I use Elastic Binsa because it, it, it does this pretty easily. It has like almost everything built in. So you can easily, uh, you know, walk through all the steps on this process. So uh, let's go through some details regarding uh, each one of the environments and the process, right? First of all, some general consideration, right? Every environment should uh, trigger, a, you know, automated tests and regression tests and unit tests or whatever tests you, you have to set there in the code, right? It's, it depends on the system. It depends on to you how hard uh, you want to test. There are some people that don't believe in unit tests some people believe that certain parts of the code should be unit tests. Uh, some other people think that 90% of the code should be unit tests. That's up to you. That's not the scope of this. It's really depend on the on the context of this of, of, of the project, right? Uh, every branch environment should have a gatekeeping process, um, a policy, or a person to approve or fulfill like a to-do list of steps before you know we get it uh, pushed to the next environment. Feature branches. Uh, you know, there's two trends here as well, right? The two trends, right? Uh, some, uh, some teams create feature branches all the way from the development environment. Uh, in my case, uh, it depends on the project, right? You usually want to start feature branches from the most stable version of the system, right? Maybe the production, maybe the pre-production or the staging area. So that way, uh, you don't interrupt the flow of things that are coming, right? Uh, or you don't get interrupted by flaw uh, code that, uh, you know, is coming, right? Um, hot fixes branches to start from the environment where they were identified or where they exist, because usually uh, you can pick up like errors in the QA or the staging area that they are not necessarily generated by the new code. Could be that just a new use case, uh, a new use case that was discovered. Maybe it is a production environment or the staging area. That's where the hot fix branch should be created from, right? Um, uh, this is also a very new trend. This is also new for me in the past couple of years. There should be no downtime for the production environment when you're doing a release, right? It's really hard. Like people from old school think that, you know, you have to schedule downtimes. It's still a big system. They do that. But uh, in the modern trends, um, people are pushing into the idea that releases shouldn't break the system or we have to aim or we have to prepare to avoid those type of interactions. You have to keep your users, uh, you know, online all the time, especially, especially if you have a large amount of users, right? Um, the production database should be regular backup, right? Um, again, uh, many of the um, systems uh, that, you know, do manage services for databases, they offer this. Uh, you, you can back up the database every minute, every hour, every day. Is it really up to you or really up to uh, the use case? Uh, the pipeline should be automated and be kept active all the time. So this means for me, ideally, you should be doing releases to production every day. This 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 gives you like two uh, very important things. You keep your changes to a minimum in a very atomic way. That way you can identify easily what went wrong. If something went wrong, you can revert it easily. And the second thing, it prepares the team for any eventuality on the deployment process, right? You don't want to be held on a release for week, two weeks, three weeks, a month, because uh, that's just going to bring problems. You're going to be facing a lot of use cases and scenarios that you didn't saw 
on the QA or the staging area. Remember, specifically for web development um, in, in large uh, web applications, right? So let's talk a little bit about uh, the branches and the environments, right? First of all, the feature branch, and just to refresh, refresh the, the, the image here, we have the feature branch, integration environment, development environment, QA environment, pre-production and production environment, right? Uh, let's talk about environment. Feature branches, you know, exclusively to work on a specific feature or version. Uh, they should normally create it from the production branch or an integration branch. Uh, we talk about that. Hot fixes, they should be uh, created from the branch where, where you identified it. Once completed and integrated, once, com once completed, tested and integrated, it should be integrated or, or merged into the previous environments just to keep the code up to date, of course. Uh, we have an integration environment, uh, and the teams that are run right now, uh, normally uh, you do this in a virtual environment or you do this in, you know, kind of like a memory environment or something similar. You merge the changes with the in the integration environment to the development branch, you perform automated tests, and if everything goes well, then your code, your feature branch can be uh, requested to merge. Right or can be created for uh, or can be or is available for creating a pull request. Uh, again, this doesn't necessarily needs to be a physical environment. It could also be simulated by just performing tests in your feature branch. So keep keep that in keep that in consideration. Right. Um, also, in the integration environment, is where you do the code review. Uh, normally, you want at least one person to code review your code, so you have at least an additional set of eyes there to review what you're doing. Uh, and next to it, uh, we have a development environment. The development environment is the very volatile environment where everybody merged their changes in order to test how they perform in a live, in a, in a real world example of the system, right? Uh, normally, my suggestion is that this environment should look as much as possible as the production environment, should simulate the same uh, conditions so uh, that you can have a proper representation of what's going on, right? QA environment, a more stable environment, as the name, uh, you know, explain it, this is an environment for the QA team in order to perform functional tests, uh, you know, see that everything is working as expected, that everything looks okay. Um, then we have the pre-production environment or the staging environment, basically, you know, the uh, environment where everything gets promoted from the QA team uh, can be exposed to real users. Uh, normally, now it's very popular to have like beta programs, not only for mobile, but also for uh, web features. Um, this is where you want to do that. It's usually connected to the production environment. It has less specs because it has less users, but you want to be able to deploy your system to a subset of users in order to test you know, uh, you know what's coming, right? Um, um, then do we have, you know, remember the two forks that we have here or the data migration environment or the new production environment? That's that's a little bit what I'm gonna talk about here in this specific one, right? Again, this environment is only created if we require like a major change on the data. This probably means that if you change the data, the current version of the system won't work or start failing everywhere and we need just to do like a hard, hard replacement. So in order to do this, you, you know, make a duplicate of the production environment, you perform your data migration process, and then you test if it was uh, successful, right? Remember that I told you that from that process, that again, this is not very common, right? It should be like very rare to change your data as much as your system will break. Um, but then from there, you have a couple of options that uh, we're going to see in just a minute, right? Uh, then you have the final production environment where every user lives. Uh, it also has uh, gatekeeping conditions and it has these additional steps, right? When you are doing the data migration process, right? Or when you're doing the normal release process. If you're promoting from the staging area, you just perform your unit tests. Uh, perhaps you want a user to perform smoke tests on the production environment or an automated system to, uh, to create a smoke test or random tests, and then you just, you know, replace the environment with, uh, with this new version. Just upload the code and everything's start working, right? You can do an environment mutation, which means, uh, you know, it's very similar to the first uh, process. 
you clone the environment, you change it with the migration process, and then you just uh, try to release that environment to the production uh, area, right? Uh, similar, but not the same as the environment swapping where you clone the original environment, you perform all the tests there, you perform the data migration process, and if everything works fine, then you took down the, the current production environment, you put that one instead, right? That's a more delicate thing. Everything here can be automated, but just something to keep in mind there uh, as a strategy for doing, uh, you know, version breaking uh, changes in your database, right? So I put a little bit more of an explanation here. I'm gonna put the link in the description of the video of this article. It's gonna be on the, on the blog, so make sure to read it if you wanna get more information. Again, uh, this is a proven strategy that I've been using for years now. I've been using and improving from, from years now to get production version of applications uh, live and online. Again, uh, this goes along with new trends regarding doing a lot of releases every week. I'm pro releases as soon as possible and small releases. Uh, everything here can be automated. Uh, you don't have to do, do manual process other than you know checking the button for approval or any manual process that you wanna you know instate uh, as uh, a requirement for upgrading an environment. Uh, but then specifics then they come with you know your specific context. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe. Uh, and you know see you next time.